Hey everyone, welcome back to Sean Ray with Sean Ray Realty. And today we're gonna to be doing a video that is going to be a follow-up of the last video I just did about the Dallas Airbnb ban. Today I'm gonna to do a hyper cut of an interview that I set up between myself, Sean Rapidich, and Vera Elkins of the Dallas Short-Term Rental Alliance. And we did an hour-long video, which you can always go check out on Sean Rapidich's channel. But if you don't have an hour to spend, which if you don't, you I mean still do it at two times speed. That's what I do, or 1.75 speed on YouTube. But if you don't, I made a hyper cut of all the really important information here today. It's only about a 20 minute video that, uh, again, you can watch while you're driving or getting ready or whatever it is. So if you're interested in what's going on in this Dallas rental market with Airbnb bans, and this is a video for you to get more detailed information information for someone that's been actively fighting for the last two or three years about this topic matter. Again, I really hope you get to get out to the July 7th meeting. That's very important that I get to see you guys there. Make sure to sign up for the links below. Without further ado, make sure to like, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Comment below, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Airbnb family, we are here in Dallas with Vera Elkins from the Short Term Rental Alliance and we're talking about a potential ban, like a full out, you cannot Airbnb ban in Dallas. Who would have thought in the great state of Texas that a city would even ban Airbnb? But here we are, it's a very real threat. We're gonna talk about how you can get involved and really what's at stake for hosts all around the greater DFW area. I'm Sean, Vera, and Sean, let's get in. Why are we here in Dallas where people are pushing for bans all of a sudden? Well, I think, you know, the most important thing that we need to realize is that um, there were people that were breaking rules, okay? Mm -hmm. These aren't just, <laughs> let's not talk about that. <laughs> you have learned your lesson. Yes. Uh, and so it, that's essentially what we're talking about is bad apples. We're not bad apples though, sorry. We're not bad, we're not bad apples. Not everyone is. Our job as an alliance is to educate those folks and say, okay, you've got a trash issue, you've got a noise issue, here's some solutions and let's educate you and let's fight for you. But I believe how we got here to your question is that people started complaining about the small percentage of bad apples and we're talking minute. And that was the actual word that the city used in the city's report is that there's, there's really not a problem. What I, can you speak to kind of like the misnomers or what, what a lot of Airbnb hosts, they think this is all about trying to really do a hard enforcement on getting the hotel tax or the license or certifications and that's the main focus but after speaking to the city council people it's more about the, the people that show up to the meetings that are really upset about their neighborhoods and noise. And so I know a lot of people that I talk to are just like, well, I'm just going to start registering. I'm just going to start paying my hotel tax and the problem will go away. But it seems like that's not the case. They're more focused on the noise. So you kind of speak to that and what we need to focus on and going forward and how we got here based on those problems, not these problems. Right. Uh, it goes back to education with the Alliance. Uh, the Alliance wants to educate those hosts of how to provide a solution. So when we go to these city council meetings, we have provided to the horseshoe, everybody knows what the horseshoe is here in Dallas, and if you don't, that city council, we have went to them numerous times with solutions to those problems that you're speaking of. There are no, there were numerous solutions, and the city actually already has laws for that, for these problems, um, but education on our end, and then also telling the city council, telling the neighborhood associations, this is what we can do about this. But in my personal opinion, and this is not the opinion of the Alliance, but my personal opinion is they're not going to be happy until they get what they want. And I do believe what they want is a ban. I feel like people, and I'm rambling, but I feel like it's, it's true. There are people that this is, the, this is their, their project in their life right now. Maybe they don't have jobs. Maybe they're stay-at-home moms. And they just want, this is their you know, alley that they're going to run in or lane that they're going to run in. Um, and some of it is just politics, and some of it is just to get votes. Yeah. What are our rights? And I want to ask you that, because I know you research this more than me. With the constitutional right and property ownership, then what, what do I have as like a right as a homeowner? I know you do rental arbitrage primarily, mm -hmm. but as far as land rights, what have you researched, and especially what happened in Austin? Um, the Supreme Court made a ruling in Austin because a homeowner wanted to Airbnb and was told they were not allowed to, and Austin ruled that 
a city can't make a rule telling a homeowner what they can do with their own property. If their property, so they can put it on Airbnb if they want, which includes them allowing someone else to Airbnb their property, which include a tenant. So you can have a co-host or you can have a renter do Airbnb with your permission as the homeowner. So that is something that was ruled in Austin and could have an effect here. If, thing, if push came to shove, I think people will still push their constitutional rights. It's Texas. What have you seen in the conversation and why is it shifted more from working with you guys and finding ways to regulate it and make it make sense to now to saying, actually, we don't want anything to do with this. How about option three? Let's focus on that and throw it to zoning and just ban it completely. How did it go from such a healthy conversation to a throw your hands up in the air, quit, and then just ban it all? Why did we get here? And why is it primarily just Dallas and not just the surrounding cities as well? And that's a great question because I have spoken with numerous city council members, um, some that are in office, uh, some that are no longer in office, and most of the time, every conversation that we've had is, yes, we wanna work with you, and then all of a sudden, it changed. But, in my personal opinion, going back to what you said, and we've briefly touched on that, let's keep in mind the season that we're in. They're ramping up for campaigning and things like that. Um, neighborhood associations started getting involved and saying, well, we represent our whole entire neighborhood. Well, that is not true, okay? Because I know of Airbnbs in those neighborhoods mm -hmm. that I have friends, you know, they're friends of mine, and they're good hosts, and they're good apples, uh, and they host very responsibly. So it's not true, but I do think that that was kind of a turning point um, because then you had neighborhood association presidents and, and things like that coming out, and that kind of shifted it, and I also think it's the political season that we're in. Um, so in my, in my video before this, I just posted yesterday, uh, I ask people to ask me questions. And one of those questions is, and this weird idea is that it's okay, I paid my hotel taxes and I'm gonna be grandfathered in, so I'm safe. No matter what happens, I'm good. Why is that not necessarily accurate? And why even if you feel like you're safe, you should still get involved and you should still come to the ZOAC meeting and you should still even register to speak on the 7th? Absolutely, um, that's a great question because I think that that's in all of our minds that are paying hotel tax. Um, at one point, if you look at past meetings with city council that was brought up, there are several city council members that said, hey, look, there is a legal precedence for grandfathering in. Um, now, if you notice when people bring that up, city council really isn't even mentioning it. Um, look, they asked us to give them proposed, re like give us regulations that you would like to see happen. Do you know how many times they asked us to do that and how many times that we drafted those up like it's insane and and nothing was ever taken in grandfathering was always in um in in our proposal because there is a legal precedence for it um so but the last couple of meetings it just doesn't seem to be mentioned by city council anymore um i don't know why that is other than i think they're scared that people will just go out and register and pay their hotel tax i do think that people need to show up I think that people need to um, show up to the 7th, which is what, next Thursday? Mm -hmm. Or this Thursday, excuse me. And we need to be speaking, we need to sign up, and the sign up deadline is tomorrow by 5 p.m. You've got two <laughs> polarized sides, yes. both that are anti-Airbnb. You've got the naggy neighbor neighborhood people, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got the hotels. And hotels have lobbyists that are always trying to push short-term rentals out of any city mm -hmm. because it takes money off of their plate. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a hotel would gladly write a fat check to some politician if they decide to, you know, kind of like forget that people are paying their hotel taxes. The hotel's like, we'll, 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 we'll like write you some extra money just so you forget about the hotel taxes you could make from that. Mm -hmm. We want to be the only people making revenue here. Yeah. So that's a game too. I have a lot, a lot of people have been asking me, should we just jump on the, jump, jump in front of the train and just do all the registration and the hotel tax because we haven't done it so far, would that make any difference at this point? What if what if we fail? And then we later on try to litigate grandfathering in, and then now we show records that we were paying hotel, even if it was only for like two or three months or, or five months. Right. Does it even matter to register or do hotel taxes this time, or is it a little bit too late? I think, uh, I think that that is one, um, I was gonna say something, I was gonna reel it back. I think that that <laughs> is one good strategy. Uh, to have. I don't think that um, 
I don't think that it's a lost cause. I think that it's a fighting, a way to fight. It's a way to say, I am a responsible uh, host, I'm a responsible business owner, this is what I'm doing. Even if they, you know, even if they've only paid, you know, and they're just now gonna start paying. Okay, well by all means. Because look, not everybody got a letter. It goes back to the city can't even, you know, enforce really the registration system that they already have. I, I know you don't work for the city, but say for instance, mm -hmm. we lose and it, it's a full ban. And then the city says, hey, we need to we need to start regulating this. And everyone starts trying to sell their house or put on put it on um, rentals. The housing market gets screwed up, the rental market gets screwed up, but then the Airbnb uh, owners that don't decide to participate, they just keep running their business. Mm -hmm. Do you know, um, in your own personal opinion, do you know what the repercussions might be of something, of someone in those situations that just say, I don't want to sell, I don't want to turn it into long-term rental, I just want to play the risk and keep going? Have you heard I believe of that there, so there have been a lot of things that have been talked about. Look, if you've ever been in these all-day city council meetings, it's like, it's like we're going to talk about the same thing and beat the hell out of something and then not come up with a solution, okay? Um, a lot of things were tossed around, but essentially it's hefty fines um, and, and they accumulate. So it's not just one fine, but they're going to accumulate. Uh, and so that, the accumulation of those fines is what's the scary thing, right? If it was just one fee, well, you know, that wouldn't seem heavy enough as what they were basically saying. So that's what's been tossed around. But if you don't pay those fines? Right. Like what happens? I'm, I'm sure that there's a process. It's just like the same thing. I, I live in a historical district with my personal home. I keep it. <laughs> uh, with my personal home. So if I, you know, break certain code violations, then eventually they do turn into fines. And then I think the, the city attorney, like I think the district attorney gets involved or something like that. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. No, it's, you're not supposed to be the expert on this question. Okay. I, just, I wanted to ask if you yeah. heard anything. So the, it basically fines and then they would accumulate. Mm -hmm. so. And every city has their stance on enforcement of fines. Like for example, Dade County, like Miami, they screw that up. They could put a fine on you and say you owe 20 grand for Airbnb in your property, but there's no way for them to levy against you. There's no way to enforce the fine. They could put they could put it on your credit score. They couldn't take any of your property. They can try to forcefully collect. They couldn't prevent you from doing anything. And that was it. But in Nashville, they gave a man a fine. The guy didn't pay his fine, and they he spent a day in jail eventually for just ignoring everything. So, um, city to city, it will change. So sure we we talked about where where we go, where we were, where we are, yes. what could happen, and lastly, I want to talk about how what is what we're asking of people. Like, what meetings? Why is it important? Absolutely. What's coming up after July seventh? Like, what? What is your Facebook group? How can they contact you? What's what's going on? And so how do we go forward? Well, thank you, because that is the most important question. <laughs> so um, on the 7th, which is Thursday, uh, please show up at the ZOAC meeting. You can, uh, will you put a link of the Dallas Alliance? So sure. they can go, uh, anyone can go to this website and get all the details. The most important thing for people to know is to sign up to this meeting on Thursday, you need to sign up by tomorrow, okay, or by 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> or today. So Tuesday, July 5th, 5 p.m. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then if you will continue to look onto our website, the Alliance website, uh, and if you sign up, we will send out emails. We are, we are communicating with people. Airbnb is communicating with people on every meeting. We, need, we don't need people just to show up to the 7th. And sometimes the city will do a briefing and let you know three days in advance. Um, we need people to, to sign up and show up at every meeting possible. It is serious, and if they don't hear from us, they're going to hear for every one, you know, just one pro, they've got three antis. And that is their personal agenda to get as many to people show up uh, that they can, and they've been, they've been effective in the past. Now, Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Hopefully, we'll get the word out. One hundred percent. How how should they be prepared? Um, show up all suit and ties, or show up casual like a normal everyday guy or girl. Um, show up with a professional speech written, or just go off the heart. What should they even talk about? What are is it going to be five hours of just sitting there bored as hell, or is it going to be interactive? Just for those people that are sitting at home right now and they've they've never been to something like this before and they're nervous to show up, what should they expect? 
Well, I think that you should come, uh, you know, business casual. Uh, and number, number one, you always want to be respectful. They are our leaders, whether we agree with them or not. Um, and, and being respectful uh, shows, uh, represents the alliance well, and it represents host well. Um, in the aspect of what they should bring up um, and talk about, well, I think that they should be prepared. Um, the last meeting, I was not prepared because the city sent out wrong information. I had to speed home to get to my computer to do it because I was going to do it via phone. Um, and I was not prepared because I spent, you know, so much time trying to get to the meeting. That being said, um, I think it's very important just to have a, three topics of why you're doing it, like you're hosting, and what's your personal story, uh, because that goes a long ways. Um, for me, it's because I, I take care of my grandmother, so it's, it's huge. That's how I got into it. Um, also, that you're a responsible host, um, and that this would this would devastate you. And also about your, uh, I would, for people that are paying their hotel tax, I would definitely bring the public notice or the letter you got. If you don't have that public notice, go online. It's there. It's a public notice. Get it because a public notice means all of us and anybody that lives in here uh, in in Dallas, that was your public notice. So bring that. Bring you know, say hey, I've registered. Etc. Etc. Because then it's showing that you're a responsible host. The people showing up, they're tallying, tallying these numbers at, at the end of every meeting. To your next question, whether it's going to be five hours, three hours, or all day, well, if people will sign up as soon as they get these emails from the Alliance, so go to our website, sign up to get these emails, sign up to be members if you're a host, or even if you're just a friend of a host, or if you're a cleaner, a house cleaner, or a maintenance person, whatever, because it, it takes I mean, it takes all of us showing up, okay? So if you'll get our emails, we're going to tell you specifically what to do. We're also going to give you talking points. Um, and so we kind of lay it out to where the people at home that are nervous, they don't have to be because everything is in that email. We also post stuff on Twitter and on uh, Facebook. In the aspect of if it's going to be all day, sign up quickly, sign up as soon as you can. That way it's first come, first serve when it comes to signing up. Uh, and just don't give up. I have sat in a meeting literally for eight hours <laughs> and then spoke. Um, I, a lot of people don't have that time. A lot of people, you know, that's, this is not their, you know, they work nine to five. I suggest doing a, um, do it over phone or do it over Zoom, but you can also do it in person. Um, so it's, a, it's up to the individual, but we make it very easy. The Alliance makes it very easy and we prepare people the best way we can. We voted you in, but I just want to let you know why it's so important to us. It's not just about me putting food on my table and for my family, and it's not just about me taking care of my grandmother, but I have a staff, I have a small staff, they're not, I don't have a big staff, they're very small, but they put food on their table. You know, so-and-so just had a newborn, you know, things like that. Um, and it is very true, if so it's, it's more than just about the host, it's about the community. And we're, I'm talking like, what are we gonna do if it does get a bit like is city council okay with sending that many people home without jobs that's my question there will be links in the description of this video for everything you need from the short term rental alliance thank you um, there probably will eventually be some form of fundraiser to get an attorney if it comes to that yes so, yes sir yep we're gonna have that um other resources that might be necessary will be in the link of this video and then of course sean ray here will have a faster recap um, of this as well. All my friends here in Dallas, I'm rooting for you guys. Um, it's going to affect all of us no matter what band they try to put. So we really need to find a way to make this um, as free as possible. You know, keep Texas free. Kind of. Yes, sir. So, thank you guys for watching this video. And as always, we'll see you on the other side. See you July 7th. Okay, I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, it's so important for you guys to come out to July 7th. You need to make sure to show up, make sure to register beforehand and register to speak. I hope I get to see you there, and if you do come, shake my hand and say, hey man, I saw your video and that's why I'm here. I wanna make sure that we're making a difference and bring a friend that's also involved, whether they're an Airbnb host or not. The more voices that we have on the pro side versus the anti side is so important. Thank you guys for spending your time to watch my video. I know you're really busy today. And of course, if you're watching it on 4th of July, why are you watching this YouTube video? But thank you so much for doing it. I really appreciate you guys supporting and making sure that we fight the good fight. All 300 Spartans versus the hordes um, of the Dallas City Council and older people that like to complain about stuff. Okay, thanks so much again for watching. 
Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I will answer your comments if you do, and check me out in another video here on a playlist on this side or that side. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Bye.